Mary Cooper. Uh, she's here talking with us about her yurts. One of the things that I fell in love with about yurts is their Mongolia, right? So the Mongols live in the steppes, okay? And the steppes have crazy, the steppes are a desert, right? So they have 100 mile an hour winds, and they have freezing cold this temperatures. This whole wall, the whole yurt, is one giant gate gate. And ours is made from pine, but you can make it from anything. In fact, I think you, your followers will really love this. My personal dream is eventually I will be making a yurt from all reusable, renewable, and recycled. One of my ideas is bamboo, because it does have that nice flex. Okay. We might be able to use bamboo for the roof like rafters. Crazy. Yeah, and it grows like this. Yeah. I mean, you plant it somewhere and it takes but over. One of the things about the Mongolian yurt and the way it's designed, too, is that it lives so lightly on the earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even dig into the earth. It doesn't even spike down. When you pick it up and take it away, there's nothing that has been harmed at all. So that gets me to the next point is wind speeds. What keeps this, you anchor a tent down, so why would you not have to anchor this down? That's an awesome question. It's because it's a circle. Diverts right. the wind. That's it, yeah. So the Mongols were like, wait a minute, how are we not gonna get blown away with 100 mile an hour winds? We're gonna build in a circle. Because when you build in the circle, the wind goes around you and hits the next thing, not you. And it goes over you and pushes your structure deeper into the earth. It actually makes it more solid. Now, did they actually put these in a village in it, like kind of next to each other to do to channel it too? Yeah, yeah. So okay. they could place them that way too. So they did community, too. right? And they had like community, right? And they were into community living too. Okay. You know, anywhere that they would go, you would pack up your yurt and load it on your yak with your whole family and move on now, to the next pasture. Explain this uh, circle brace right here. Okay. So this. Uh, There's some logic to that. Yeah, so that's that's really the heart of the yurt. Mm -hmm. That's everything in a yurt. Is your that's called a roof ring. So your roof ring, which the Mongols call the eye of God, which I think is awesome. It's like God is looking down and watching over. So your thing. roof ring has all your rafters slotted into it, and then they slot down onto the walls. So it slots in there and then the roof pole, ridge pole runs right down and slots into here with a bird's mouth and that gives it even more Now support. you said there was uh, insulation kits mm -hmm. for these. Yeah. Um, so you, you can insulate this oh, yeah. roof yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, here, yep. everything. Yeah, what you would do is we sell three season yurts so we don't have insulation kits but you can build your own insulation kit which I'm doing right now. What would you use, what material? Well, I'm recycling all my old fleece blankets and sweaters Okay. and sewing it into an insulation kit. Gotcha. Because all you have to do, the insulation kit is simply another piece like this, but it's made of your insulation and it hangs between. And then you do a second piece of insulation in between here. Okay. And what about your, rain? So this, this sheds the rain yeah. really well? Yeah, so rain, it's fireproofed and waterproofed already from the company. We buy sailcloth, it's canvas sailcloth, 10 or 12 ounce duct weight, depending on which one you want. And it comes already fireproofed, and it comes already waterproofed. Is this very portable? Can you, oh, it's you can just pick portable. it up, take it somewhere else? Yeah, So if people yeah. are transient, this isn't. This is great, because what you can do is just pack it down and put it in your whatever you have. Like for instance, I have a 2006 town and country mommy van. It is not huge. It's not like those big ones that take up the whole parking space. I have a little one. You can fit this in there. Oh, yeah. And this is a pretty oh, yeah. large, this I don't is, know if you can see how big. Yeah, it's 14 foot. Put it together when you take it all apart. Um, 45 minutes. By yourself? Yep. Yeah, tomorrow I'll take this down in 45 minutes. Taking down is so way take easier all these, take than all putting out. Yeah. Yeah. They, they kind of accordion together, these do, or you got to take all the bolts out? It accordions together. It's oh, one right. whole piece. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah, wow. it's just one accordion wall. Wow. And it squishes together. Okay. It's maybe, maybe three feet across. Right. Uh, ten feet tall. Right. And by the time we pack all the yurt stuff on top of it, it's a foot and a half high. That's really cool. And that's what fits in the bottom of my mommy van. And uh -huh. honestly, the stuff I take, like to glamp it up or to make myself more comfortable takes more room than the yurt does. Now what if you wanted to uh, have a like a stove, like a wood stove yep. or anything like that? You'd have would you have to puncture this and have a <laughs> pipe going through? 
Nope. You do not have to puncture it and put a pipe through if you put it in the center. Um, traditionally, the Mongols put their stove in the center. Okay. And it'll vent right up through there. So you can put a fire in the same spot, in the center, in your yurt. And as long as I have that flap open, it's going to vent straight up as long as I have Great. everything that's really interesting. So uh, thanks for talking with us. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, explaining the yurt. No problem. Yeah. Thank you.